Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. I'm just admiring this beautiful gray banded king snake and looking through a lot of the babies that are now not so much babies that are gonna breed next year. And talking about breeding next year, we have so many amazing animals, again, like this gray band. Believe it or not, this is what you would see them in West Texas look like in the wild. I mean, it's crazy to think that you would find a snake this beautiful without a mutation, without captive breeding, without anything, just flip a rock and this thing would be here. I am so excited for egg season next year, which makes me really realize how much I'm already missing collecting eggs up here in the Caliber Room. And I tell you what, I sure do miss that song. But speaking of that, uh, what do you say we head down to the dungeon? And guess what? This is really weird. This says eggs. I wonder what happened to Quinn on that one. Hmm. Well, actually, it should be pretty safe then. There must not be any Illuminati in this. But it is a clutch I was so excited about. Of course, this is a spied ball python. So it's a spider pied. And for whatever reason, when you mix spider and pied and you get the recessive mutation, you get an all white snake with just the head pattern right there. You can see it's got just the head pattern and the rest of the body is pure white. Now this was actually bred to an albino pied. So everything in the clutch is gonna be pied. We're gonna have spides and pied. So half the clutch on average, is gonna be spied head for albino. The other half of the clutch is gonna be pied that is also head for albino. That is pretty exciting. This is a, this girl's first year and I just love pulling pieds off clutches of eggs. You guys know this is the first year I've ever done it. So I'm pretty excited every time I get a clutch. There's no doubt about that. We've got some eggs kind of tooling around here a little bit, so I'm going to have to be careful. And this mama is about to light me up. It's okay, girl. You did so good, mama. And I'm going to just go ahead and put this egg over here. We'll candle this clutch just to make sure she didn't roll them around. Whenever there's loose eggs, we want to do that. That's right. So, but nevertheless, huge eggs right now. Just take a look at the size of these eggs. I always say I'd rather have a little bit smaller eggs and more of them. But nevertheless, we've got two, four, five eggs in there. Again, every one of these is going to be pied or spied. They'll all be het for albino. That's pretty freaking awesome. Awesome. I mean, I'm telling you what, the year keeps getting better and better. And even though we have a few more clutches to go and we call it a quits for 2020, it's been a year to remember. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. I know I have. This clutch was awesome. I'm sure there's not that many people that have a life where they walk into their work, they're surrounded by a bunch of really cool reptiles and stuff like that. And then they look and they have a big alligator over here. What are you doing, Arch? What are you doing, baby boy? You gonna stay or you gonna jump in? You gonna go back home? Why don't you go back home? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go back home. Thank you. <laughs> what an absolutely sick, oh, by the way, got a, got a little wet there, guys. But you know what? He'll come back and now what he's gonna do is he's gonna try to show his dominance to me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Arch, right, come here. What are you doing? You gonna show your dominance to me? Come on, buddy. You're okay. And what'll happen is I'll just kinda, you know, play with him a little bit here. He'll kinda do his little thing, whatever. And then ultimately what's gonna happen is he's gonna submit just like that. And he's gonna kinda swallow, he's gonna kinda, come on, buddy. Come on, little monkey. And when he goes underwater, he's basically saying, all right, dad, you win. And that's the thing with training these types of animals, you have to be the alpha, right? You can't let them win the battle. If he wins, he thinks he can continue to do that. And you have to make sure he understands, you have to submit to me. And now he just kind of goes under here and he's kind of like, all right, dad, I'm sorry for being a bad boy. In the meantime, I tell you what, guys, it's just awesome to have a pet alligator like ours. The thing that's amazing about pieds, of course, they're a recessive mutation, but then you can breed them into all kinds of other mutations to produce incredible animals. Obviously, to dad to this clutch was actually an albino piebald ball python. Both the albino and the pied are what they call recessive mutations, meaning that when you breed them together, you'll get normal looking babies that are double heterozygous for both albino and pied. And then Mendelian genetics would basically have a what they call a 9331 ratio, meaning that every 16 babies on average will come out albino and pied. And then you'll get three albinos, three pieds, a bunch of heads and all that other stuff. The point is, is that that's an average over many, many generations. But the fact is, is that piebalds mixed into animals incredible. Even just a 
normal pied like my guy Drama here is just really an incredible animal. A single gene recessive mutation. Of course we call him Drama because you can see right here he's got a smiley face that's upside down and right side up and so we just figured he's a Drama animal. Absolutely wonderful. I remember when he was a baby he's getting pretty big and he'll probably breed next year. The fact is is that smileys and emojis on pieds that do happen from time to time they don't pass along so unfortunately even though he's got two smiles on him he's not going to probably pass on those smiles unless it's just a random occurrence. But you certainly can breed the other mutations just like the albino pied I was talking about. This is actually a pastel pied so the pastel is incomplete dominant again pieds are recessive and you can actually produce these just a little bit higher yellow a little bit more broken up pattern and stuff like that just a little bit prettier than the normal pied. And like I mentioned there is a ton of different pie balls. Ooh, what is he doing? He's a crazy little monkey right here. This is actually a pin pied which is just absolutely incredible. It's a pin stripe and a pie and he is ready to take a pop at me. He's like come on get closer I want to bite you. And we actually produced the very first pin pies back in the early 2000s. Absolutely incredible animals. Again this is a low white pin pied so it's only got about 10 or 15 percent but I tell you what these guys are really special to me obviously because we produced the first ones. I definitely need to be producing some more pied stuff for sure. So basically we've learned with pieds you can breed for colors and put them into different mutations but you can't breed for the amount of white. It's a completely random thing. You can have 10% pieds, you can have 90% pieds. Well actually the one animal that you certainly can breed for the amount of white is the spies. Actually sinnies are usually this way as well. For whatever reason when you breed pieds to spider you'll only get a head pattern of a spider and then the rest is pure white. So they're all 90% white and just a head cap a pattern. So if you do breed a spied, a spider pied into other mutations all you're going to do is change the color of the head which is pretty cool. So I was excited that mama gave us a good clutch of eggs today and listen they're all going to be pies because they're albino which is a double recessive bred to the spied which is also recessive and an incomplete dominant. So basically half the clutch is going to be spied het for albino and the other half will be pied het for albino. It's going to be a pretty awesome clutch to hatch in just another 57 days. The other day we hit the Barney Ball Python. Well, we have another clutch here that was kind of almost all hatched out or at least pipped out when I looked at the incubator this morning. But this again is a chocolate pinstripe to that chocolate banana spinner, the same one that produced the Barney Ball Python. Uh, we can see right here we have a, a little Camel Ball Python, which is the one that we're looking for with banana, the Barney Ball minus the banana. And then we have just a little spinner ball python right here. We still have a few eggs that have pipped out, but we don't know what's in them. So let's just go ahead and see what's going on. And again, these guys have all pipped out and they would probably all be climbed out really probably by tomorrow to be totally honest with you but let's see what this first one is right here you know what this is uh this is actually it. another barney ball python this one is a little bit lighter than the last one but this is the barney ball python the banana camo ball python so wow now we've hit two barney ball pythons after it took us three years to not hit one so wow unbelievable wow that thing is awesome I, oh, I didn't think it. When I looked at this clutch and I saw it, I thought, ah, oh, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything that spectacular. And right off the rip, we have a Barney ball. Wow. Who knows? Maybe we'll have more. Let's go with the egg number two. It's hard to cut because of all these slits in here. Got to be really careful, too, to not hurt the snake. And guess what, guys? You've got to be kidding me. No, this is a banana chocolate spinner. It's a banana chocolate spinner. At first I was like, is it another Barney ball plate knife? But it's not. It's a banana chocolate spinner. Still absolutely amazing. Two eggs to go. Okay, so this is a banana chocolate spider ball python. So banana chocolate spider ball python. We actually hit one in both of the last two clutches too, so now we've hit it off. One egg to go. Doesn't look like it's a banana. I can see through it real quick. So let's just cut this egg and see what's in there. And it looks like we just have a chocolate pinstripe here. So all in all guys, amazing. We hit another Barney ball python. Absolutely incredible. When the other one crawls out, I'll show you. It's incredible. When they shed out and start growing, it's going to be amazing. So uh, there it is. We still have one or two more Barney clutches coming too. So that is pretty epic. What do we have here? Just a bunch of little corn snakes here. We've got, let's see, a uh, little albino corn, normal corn. There's a little black corn down here and a couple other little albino corn snakes. So just a bunch of really cold corn that are actually had for sun kiss and have for strawberry as well. And now the snakes are getting out all over the place. Come on, you guys stay in there. Don't, come on little monkeys. Come on, all right, I'm gonna set my camera down for one second, get these guys in here. All right. As always, I make sure there's no heads caught. Never want that to happen. 
bunch of cool little corn snake babies for sure. We had a little creamsicle clutch right here. This is the creamsicle corns, and these are the het creamsicle corns. Really pretty animals. And again, I've mentioned before that that creamsicle is that more orange rather than red corn snake, right? And that orange actually came from long ago, like 15 years ago, breeding a corn snake into an emery rat. That's why these guys are a little bit more brownish than, say, a normal corn that has more red in them. And then the albinos of them actually turn into this, which is the creamsicle version. So we didn't get very many creamsicles out of this clutch, but we did get some beautiful het creamsicles that have that beautiful tan brown color to them. Just a couple little babies in this clutch here. This was actually a yellow belly to a pastel ivory. So we just have a couple little ivory ball pythons here. These are actually both pastel ivory ball pythons. The pastel ivories are a little bit more faded and the ivories will have a little bit more of a gray head than this and so on like that. These guys turn a little bit more white than the normal ivories as well. So again, a very small clutch, just two little babies, but the odds are really good. The fact that we produce two white babies in the egg, that's pretty awesome. Another baby ball python clutch hatch, but I tell you what, it's been a crazy year, hasn't it? It's been absolutely incredible. This was actually just a pinstripe bread to an extreme gene banana spider. So we have all kinds of really cool animals here. This is actually just a little banana extreme gene spider right here. That's pretty cool. And then we've got a couple spinners right here. These are actually banana spinner extreme genes. They look really, really good. And then we just have a little banana pinstripe here. It doesn't look like an extreme gene, just a normal banana, but nevertheless, really cool. And then just a little spinner in a normal, but really beautiful babies. And again, what a year. I tell you, we're running out of space, guys. I mean, we literally are like three quarters full as far as our babies downstairs in the dungeon, and we still have a lot of eggs to go. I mean, I think we're only about halfway through hatching, so uh, we're going to get some new stuff up on the website. Hopefully, some stuff sells so that we have enough space to set all these babies up. Regardless of what happens, we'll find the space, but it's awesome when we're having a year like we are this year. Got another little package here. Uh, it's pretty heavy. And I always say that heavy stuff is usually good stuff, uh, unless you've got bricks in your backyard that I had to carry out after Noah destroyed the backyard. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, what do we have here? We have a whole bunch of stuff. Wow, look at this. This is crazy. So, uh, all right, let me just, uh, the big note says, uh, hey, Brian, Lori, the gang, uh, we hope this finds you well. We're including some goodies for all of you guys here at the shop. Uh, Brian has the roller balls. There's so much stuff in here, guys. This is crazy. There's an anxiety blend with some concept to put in the Paul's pants. What? <laughs> There's stuff for Lord. There's stuff for Bruce, Noah. A uh, game to possibly play on Noah's channel. That's awesome. Uh, there's uh, Beth has something here. Jay has something here. Uh, a camo bracelet for Jay. So thank you so much. So uh, we hope all these find you well and it brightens your day. If you could please open on the vlog, which I just did, uh, we appreciate that. So thank you uh, again for everything. It's Misty and Wayne. I appreciate you. So it's pretty cool. I always love producing pie stuff, and this is the first pies I've ever produced. That was absolutely incredible. If you enjoyed this video, here's a playlist of me just pulling snake eggs of all types. I think you guys will enjoy that. Could you also do me a favor? Right up here, can you subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking In? Every Wednesday we have a checking in. And now we're doing some extras too. You guys will like that. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody. And I promise I'll see you tomorrow.